Belle's Cottage is one of my favorite house skins in the game, and I can't wait to show you how I decorated it. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Hello friends, and welcome to my channel. It is so good to see you today. The work has continued in my valley, and I recently completed the Peaceful Meadow. I am very excited to take you all on a full tour of the area in a future video, but today I wanted to share Belle's Cottage with you. I'm sure it's going to be no surprise to any of you that I am slightly obsessed with the house skins in the game, and this one in particular is easily one of my favorites. I love the rustic sort of cottage vibe it gives off and the feature of the moving water. Now when I first got this skin from the premium shop, I immediately placed it down in the Forest of Valor, and while I do think that that would be a great item to use in that biome, I realized pretty quickly that it would better suit my neighborhood build in the peaceful meadow in my game. So I grabbed the house and I placed it in the area between the Glade of Trust and the plaza. This is the perfect spot for the size of this house and it left me plenty of room to really style the area. For the path, I used the natural rock path and I did use the borderless version in this build. To make the path curve up towards the house, I used a bunch of the small moss covered rocks and I rotated them all at various angles. This is an old trick used by many Dreamlight Valley players, and while I personally haven't used it in quite a while since we can now craft bordered paths, I really like the way it looks here and it fits very well with the kind of overgrown look that I was going for. Unfortunately, this method can really take a toll on your item count in the game, so I think it's really best used for shorter paths or in smaller areas. If the item limit is a concern for you and you do like this look, I would suggest incorporating bushes and other small plants to help achieve the look with less items. For my path, I did go ahead and make sure that I had an opening on each side for easy navigation, and since you can walk over the ferns in the game, I used these to hide the openings. I then added in a bunch of the beach grass, various bushes, and butterfly flowers to really add to the overgrown look. I also decided to add in some of the Tangles ombre bushes for more variety. I personally think that these kind of look like weeds, and I actually really love them in this area. I wanted the area to feel kind of tucked away, which is why I initially planned to place the house in the Forest of Valor, but to achieve the same look down in the meadow, I used the trellis arch at the entrance and decorated it with more shrubs and some barrels. I always have and probably always will love the small rock clusters in the game. I think they're so versatile and perfect to create paths through grassy areas. I did use quite a few of them in this build and I really love the texture that they add to the area. As I continue working on the area, you'll notice my pretty excessive use of shrubs and grass. If this isn't something that you enjoy or if you're trying to reduce your item count, you can definitely cut down on the number of these items that you use. I then decided to randomly place some of the vine flower lamps from Cinderella throughout the yard. Since Belle is all about her books, I decided to use the Papa San swing chair towards the back of the house to create a quiet area for her to sit down with a good novel and relax.
Because I imagined Belle to be a very fast reader, I added in some of the book stacks so that she was sure to always have her next story at her fingertips. I also placed another trellis arch and some more barrels at the rear of the house for some visual interest. It definitely wasn't intentional, but when I was doing it, I think it kind of makes it look like there's a back door on the house. I decided to place some of the rocky terrain pieces down to create a patio area as well. To complete the build, I just went through the entire area and added a variety of bushes, plants, and grasses. While I was doing this, I did go ahead and stop several times and run through just to make sure that I could easily navigate through the area. One thing that I've learned as I've decorated more and more in the game is that if I can't easily walk through the area, I'm going to end up hating the design no matter how beautiful it is. After I was done doing that, I added in some of the flowers from the Forgotten Lands and the Forest of Valor to add some color into the design. While I don't think that there is anything special or grand about this build, I do love all of the natural elements, the colors, and just this house skin in general. This was the last build that I did in the Peaceful Meadow, so I'm very excited to share a full tour of the biome with you in a video very, very soon. I have two biomes left to complete in my valley, and I can't wait to move on to those and share my ideas with you soon, as I will be featuring some more of my favorite house skins. I'm curious, what is your favorite house skin in the game? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's all I had for you today, friends. Until next time, peace out. Thank you.